anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? A uh, little different. A little different. The sun is the little. The sun is still out here, Jerry. Yeah, yeah. And we are for the first time doing a recording immediately. Yeah. This is an after the Ohio State game here. This is an immediate react. We're like 15 minutes after, after, you know, the clock's at zero. Um, yeah, and, and Kyle won't be joining us for uh, norm- behind the scenes. We normally do two episodes in each sit down session. Uh, Kyle will not be joining us for Start the your video, Jared. Oh, have I not sent my video to the to the fellas? <laughs> All right, I'm sending well, that, my that's, video that's to how, the fellas. That's how quick we're. That's how quick we are doing this here. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, go ahead, Jared. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're, we're good now. They have they have camera. Um, yeah, but OK, for, forget forget the behind the scenes stuff. Let's let's talk about Ohio State versus Penn State. Um, 20 to 12. I mean, listen, any win here, any win here is exactly. I mean, it's just any win, right? You come into this game, a top 10 matchup. It's at home. It's against one of the best, de- statistically the best defense in college football coming into this football game. Uh, if you listen to our Know Your Enemy show, I gave you all the stats. I'm not going to give them to you again. But coming into this, coming into this game, and again, we can talk about Penn State's schedule up till this point and maybe how that aids in their uh, statistic dominance. Um, obviously, right? Best team they played up until this game was Iowa, was West Virginia. They, they, they had not played anyone great to this point. So, I mean, granted. But even if you're playing lesser football teams, still coming in with just, you know, number one in rush defense. Uh, they were in the top 10 for pass defense. Number one, forcing a, a bad completion percentage against quarterbacks. Across the board, either top 10 and in many cases, number one in the country defensively, even if the schedule is, eh, that's still incredibly impressive. So to come in and put up 365 total yards against the number one defense in college football, 286 passing yards against the number one defense in college football. And like, 22 first downs against the number one defense in college football. And and like you went six for 16 on third downs, which, okay. Isn't, I mean, it's in most, in most situations, isn't great, but against this defense, not that bad. And and I would say a lot the, the same about just the offensive line in general, the offensive line, Kyle, I would say at many points in this game and like we've talked about, you know, the weakest point on the Ohio State chain, the weakest link in the Ohio State chain is the offensive line. And they had some spectacular moments in this game um, and they had some less than spectacular moments in this game. But considering the competition, considering not just the talent they were facing, but the depth they were facing, the scheme that they were facing, I thought performed pretty well. I mean, based off of, you know, when we get to the grades, we grade based off of expectation and our expectation for the offensive line at this point isn't sky high. And considering the competition they played against, I thought the offensive line did pretty well. I I, I will I'll say yes. I think overall they played better than I thought they were going to. Right. Uh, especially in the first half. First half, I will give them I'll give them a high grade in that first half there. But the second half, it, it felt like the the uh, wheels are starting to to come off on that offensive line there. Like looking at the stat here, Jared, uh, if you're looking at the first half, Ohio State ran the ball 20 times for 62 yards. OK, OK, that, that's that's an OK number. That's an okay number against this uh, against this defense. But then the second half, you're in it 21 times for 17 yards. Not great. Um, no, not I, gr- not great at all. Part of that I'm going to put on the coaching staff. Stop running on first down. Just stop. Mm-hmm. 
Stop running at any time in which the defense is expecting you to run. Just stop. Your, your offensive line isn't going to be that good. You have to pass the ball to set up the run, not the other way around. Yep. Um, anytime the defensive ends are hitting home is a good day, says Zach. I, I agree. JT had a monster game. Statistically, it doesn't show. But JT had a monster game. Sawyer made some amazing impact plays. Uh, I think we saw uh, Hall and uh, Sawyer, or excuse me, Hall and um, Ty Leak make some incredible disruptive plays. Uh, I don't know what the statistics are for everyone I just mentioned. I know JT's statistics are, un it's like one tackle and one sack, but he was all over the place. He was blowing up screens. Mm -hmm. He was keeping containment. Um, JT I'll had a fantastic had a game. I'll tell you who else had a great game here. Number seven, Jordan Hancock. Early on, Jordan Hancock had himself a great, great game. Yeah, yeah no uh, Denzel Burke already, in this game. Yeah, and didn't, didn't hear much of him in that second half, which is a good sign Usually, most of the time there. Uh, he, did, he didn't really call his name much in that second half, but the first half he made a lot of great tackles. He came up big, really, really liked um, – Really liked Hancock there. Simon it, it, made some great. Simon, Simon made some great plays as yeah. well too. Igbenosa, as well as I would say, other than what early on in this game, I don't even remember Igbenosa playing. Which, you know, he he graduated to cornerback one for this game with no Denzel Burke. And where where was Igbenosa in this game? I I only remember a couple plays in which they threw directly at him, which is again exactly what you want from your cornerback. I barely remember him playing. Proctor had another mm -hmm. good game. Um, Jermaine Matthews, it needs to be said, uh, yes. got an increased number. True freshman, in case anyone's listening who doesn't know, Jermaine Matthews, number 24, was the second slash third cornerback on the field today. Uh, mm -hmm. He was rotating a lot with, with Hancock. Uh, there were many instances in which there were three cornerbacks on the field that you'd have both Hancock and Matthews out there. Again, that's a true freshman. Uh, future, uh, future of the Ohio State cornerback room is very bright. Uh, I mean, the present of the Ohio State cornerback room is very bright. But remember, Igbenosa uh, is only in his second year. Jermaine Matthews is in his first year. You know, you fully expect both Hancock and Burke to leave at the end of the year. But like Ohio State's set for next year, cornerback wise. Yeah, no, absolutely here. Uh, so trying to break, break it down here, re really liked what I saw from Ohio State. There is definitely some some play calling that I really liked. Uh, I like that that screen, that screen play. I think it was in the second half to. Marvin Harrison to convert the first down down in the red zone there. Um, but definitely some some questionable calls as seems like it's a recurring thing every every game here. Some questionable calls here, especially on the short yardage situation, it, especially on the on the one yard line there. Just come on, Day. Just QB sneak. No, listen, you, listen, just QB I'm sorry. sneak that. If, if you think that Day was gonna run Kyle McCord. The play after Brown got hurt running the ball on the goal line, then you don't know. You don't know Ryan Day. If you think that they were going to run Kyle McCord, the play right after Devin Brown got hurt running the ball. You don't know Ryan Day. I'm sorry. You, you just straight up. There was zero chance in hell that they were going to let Kyle McCord run that football. Zero chance in hell. Now, that's not to say that the pass that they ran was the correct play call. Um, I don't know, man. You got Marvin Harrison. Like, isolate Marvin Harrison on one side of the field and just let him jump ball it. And if they double him, send, you know, send the tight end short there since Marvin Harrison is probably going to, you know, take away everyone on one side of the field. You just sort of run the tight end on a drag pattern to that area, which is now completely empty because everyone's so scared of Marv. Then he should be there as your backup option. I don't know. Uh, I they're they're out thinking themselves on the goal line sometimes. Yep. And I agree. 
And I, you know, I'll, I'll say it like you were just never going to have a tremendous running game against Penn State. You just never that was not in the cards for today. And they were I said, and I said this already, but they were running their best. Ohio State was running their best when they were running. Not on first and 10, not when Penn State was expecting it. Yeah. Because it, anytime they tried, anytime they tried to run the ball in an obvious running situation, they got stuffed. Day post game here said best part about today is you come out, come out of it thinking we probably should have won by a couple of touchdowns. Well, I mean, that may not be the best part. That's that's a hey, there's coaching issues here, day like. That's that's on you guys. I don't think it's coaching issues. I think it's offensive line issues. And, you know, well, once again, we can talk about the play calling on the goal line. Well, because of the deficiencies in the offensive line room, you have to do things that are more creative in order to get into the end zone, as opposed to just, you know, throwing two tight ends, a defensive end and a running back out there and just bullying into the end zone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, ideally, you're, you're that's mentioned. what you want to be able to do. But if your offensive line just isn't that, then I don't know what to tell you. Yeah. I mean, you, you mentioned it. Marvin Harrison, um, uh, you mentioned Marvin Harrison uh, just recently here. Uh, had a career game here. 11 catches. Uh, most catches he had in a game. 162 yards and a touchdown uh, for him in this game here. Yeah, just just a minimum among boys there and i'm surprised penn state didn't double cover him as much as they uh as much as they didn't i thought they would double cover him a l- little bit more than that i mean they they did but i mean you know in the situations where you, you saw maybe mccord not know where th- where to throw the ball you know holding on to it a little too long or you know a lot of the passes that went to stover i think were along those lines. Um, But, you know, the whole idea is that everyone knows more. I think Marv, uh, excuse me, uh, Day said it in the like immediate interview coming off of the field with Fox. He just, you know, he says, you know, we stay up late figuring out how to get Marv the ball, even though we know he's going to be double covered the entire game. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Uh, right. Drew Aller, um, Drew Aller, yeah, Drew uh, Aller. I I I, like I, 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 I like Drew I, Aller. Hey, Drew, if you're listening to this, you're not listening to this. There's zero chance in hell you'll ever hear or see this. Drew, um, Washington and Oregon are both going to be looking for quarterbacks in the off season. Get the hell out of Penn State. They're going to ruin you. They're going to ruin you. Oregon and Washington yeah, is, will both be looking for quarterbacks next year. Yeah, this Penn is, State's going to ruin you. Get the hell out of Penn was, State. This is very uncharacteristic of of uh, of Drew Aller. Like he's he's usually really good with the ball, um, really accurate throwing it. But yeah, I mean credit to Ohio State's defense to making it challenging for him, getting pressure on him that he's not used to all season. Because, I mean, we, we talked about it in the Know Your Enemy uh, section earlier um, in the week, last week. They, they've never played a good enough, they never played a good defense or offense like they did against Ohio State. And it really yeah. showed here that Drew just did not feel comfortable back there. And passes that he typically makes, they're off, not just by a little bit, but quite a bit too. Like a lot of those uh, five yard and outs that he usually makes. Yeah way off way off on that the the timing is off and just everything was off for penn state so hats off to the silver bullets silver bullets are back and this with with this kind of defense here they can figure things out a little bit more on the offense to be a little bit more consistent this is a championship caliber team yeah absolutely um everybody uh everyone had a plan until silver bullets are flying yeah exactly spikes uh it's yeah Penn State just is not there offensively and one of the things if you go all the way back to our Big Ten preview that we did back in August 
one of the things I looked at when I was, you know, looking at Penn State was that they were going, they weren't returning many. Uh, and I believe they early on in the season or maybe even the preseason lost, if I'm remembering correctly, an offensive tackle to injury. Um, if I'm remembering that correctly, um, this Penn State team put 31 on Iowa, by the way. Yeah, exactly, Austin. We can talk about how Penn State's offense isn't very good, but like we also have to give our own defense a lot of credit. Uh, but yeah, the the whole the whole point being that I think that Penn State, like Ohio State, has some real weaknesses along the offensive line right now. Um, and that was like a thing that we talked about during the uh, during the season preview because we just weren't sure what if much they were bringing back along the offensive line based off of who they lost last year. Yep, yep. Uh, Penn State went one for 16 on third downs and lost to Ohio State. And by the way, uh uh-uh. uh. That that one was in when Ohio State was straight up preventing at the end during mm-hmm. Penn State's, you know, desperate attempt to get a touchdown. Um by the way, Ohio State now has the number one defense in the country. How how would you how would you say that? Is that like based off of what metric? Because there's like a lot of teams that haven't even played yet today. Is that like yards per game? Oh, per play. Yards per play. We'll see. We'll, we'll see how things shake out Sunday night or on Sunday, at least. We'll see how things shake out. Yep. Yep. All right, Kyle. Uh, uh, anything, uh, do you want yeah. to get into the grades now or uh, Kate Stover had a great game? Um, Mayan Williams comeback oh, oh, game. Oh, I know the average like, isn't great, but con- again, considering the defense played, I thought he looked fine. Well, I'll, I'll say the receiving part, Cade Stover looked great. He had some big, big whiffs. Yeah. On, on the blocking side. A big, lot of big whiffs there. That's very, again, very uncharacteristic yeah. of Stover. Uh, but. I, I don't know if I'd say it's uncharacteristic, especially, again, considering the level of competition they were playing. It's um, true. It's and you also, true, it also needs to be noted that Penn State did lose – their second best pass rusher pretty early in the football game, their second best defensive end pretty early in the, in the mm-hmm. football game. I'm not making excuses for Penn state because Ohio state was missing a ton of people coming into this game as well. Um, but you know, it does need to be noted that, that Penn state was down a very important player on their defense pretty early in the game. Yeah. All right, let's get into the gradings then Jared. Go and get Ohio State was missing it. running back one, wide receiver two, and cornerback one. Yes, yes, they were. All right, yeah, let's get into the grades. All right, coaching staff. We start. We start with the coaching staff. What would you grade the coaching staff as a whole in this game, Jared? Um, I thought the. I can't. I can't. So I mean, like, if we were separating this as far as offense and defense, like I'd go straight up a plus yeah. for the defense. Um, offense. There were some questionable issues. I would say um, that being said, like Ryan day didn't, he didn't go full blown. No, we're going to run the ball. Ryan day. You know what I mean? He, he did go to the pass. The with Ness- 41 times in this game. Yeah, but we, we've seen him against lesser teams go straight up like, no, I'm going to run the ball every first and every second down. You know what I mean? Like we lit- we've literally watched him do that against lesser teams. Um, but but I thought that they, you know, brought out the passing game when they needed to. Yeah. So what would you grade them as a whole then, Jared? Um, I'm going to give them a pretty I mean, I think I'm going to do like an A minus, but. I'm going to say that the uh, that's being carried a lot by the defensive side. I'm going to say that Um, Mm. that that a minus is being very heavily carried by the defensive side of the coaching staff. I'm going with a straight B. 
I, I agree okay. with you. I think de- defensively, A plus, A A plus, just fantastic from start to finish. There, just fantastic. Really, really like how this defense has developed here. And then, like the the offense, yeah, it's like a C C minus there. So, so average to a B. Right. Um, I don't know. It, it feels you have to understand that again, and maybe I don't know how good Penn state's defense actually is right again, statistically before this game, number one defense in the country, you have to look at their schedule and, and wait that. But you know, if the offense struggled today, well, maybe it's because they were playing one of the best, you know, at least one of the best. Can, can we inarguably say that Penn state one of the top 10 best defenses in all of college football this year. Is anyone going to, is anyone going to combat me on that? Are there, are there 10 defenses better than Penn state right now? No, no, no. Kyle said, no, um, no one's going to contest me on that. So, yeah, okay, maybe the offense didn't look like a finely tuned machine against one of the best defenses in college football. I don't know. If the defense pitched an A+, then it feels a little silly to be giving the coaching staff overall a B. When the you had the challenges against the Penn State defense being what it is. Mm-hmm. So, so statistically, they are giving up 193 yards total, 123 in the air, and 69 on the ground there. So it, nice. Ohio State ended up, what was it, 79 on the ground, so a little more than what Penn State is typically giving up. But and then slaughtered them through lot, the air. Slaughtered them through the air, more than double that. So why, why are we grading... Why, why, why would you grade the offensive coaching staff so poorly that it pulls an A plus on the defensive side? All, it's essentially like you're giving the offensive coaching staff like a D. It, it feels a little low is all it's, I'm saying. It's expectations. I, I know how this I know how this offense can roll. I know how this offense can roll and it's they're just not clicking. They're just not clicking. I I don't know if you could have realistically expected a whole lot better than, you know, 24 points this game. That quarterback here, 22 for 22 for 35, 286 yards and a touchdown here, 63% completion against this um, pretty good uh, Penn State defense here. At times of accord, Seemed off, especially in that second half or the second quarter. He seemed out, seemed pretty off. But then you see some amazing throws he made to. Yeah, I think he made a fantastic one to Tate. Through through a couple great ones to Stover as well. You, you see the talent. The talent yeah. is there. It's just that consistency that we need yep. to see McCord do here. So, I, I think agree. with, I think with the defense that he went up against here, and again expectations for Kyle McCord. I, I'd probably give him like a like a B plus. I, I I thought overall he did well. He he did ha- he did luck out with the one fumble that he had that came back for Ohio State. Never that happened. A, that was a doesn't four- count. That was a fourteen point turnaround right there, but never the happened. Got doesn't count. Acknowledged, but he's got to <laughs> he's got he's got to have that. Can we, can we talk timer about in, in his in his head there just knows like can all we right, talk about can we talk right, about the fumble one, that didn't happen? It's worth okay. noting that the penalty the whole the defensive holding occurred against the player who he was trying to throw the ball to. It's not like it was a total and bailout. Fair. And that's fair. He wanted to throw it to Marv. Marv got held coming out of his break. If Marv isn't held coming out of his break then McCord is probably going to throw the ball there. Whether the ball is completed or not, who the hell knows? But the ball is at least thrown. And the That's fumble fair. never happens. So it's not it's not like it was a, a oh, a, a total bailout. Oh, Ohio State totally got lucky. Ohio State totally got bailed out. No, that's not true. 
they did not just that like it was a direct effect of the play. That's fair. Great 14 <laughs> point swing, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, except that like it should have. I mean, thank God. the Thank God the penalty was called and Ooh. it was the correct call. But, you know, we see plenty of correct calls not called. So thank God it was called. All right. What, what would you grade McCord then? Again, based off of expectation. And when I say that, a lot of that has to do with Penn State's defense. I'm going to go like an A minus. Um, again, you you read off his stats. 22 of 35, six, which is a 63% completion percentage, nearly 300 yards. Um, quarterback rating of 140.9. Against a team that was number one... It, quarterbacks against Penn State were only completing something stupid like 45% of their passes or something stupid like that coming into this game. And I'm not saying Marv, excuse me, I'm not saying that uh, McCord was perfect. He definitely missed some balls that he shouldn't have missed. I, you know, I'm still giving him an A- minus for missing some, I think, were very makeable throws. But Again, you have to consider the level of competition he was playing and what Penn State has done to other Kyle. Why, why do you have stats up as your camera right now? I'm, I'm just showing here. You were going through the numbers. I, uh, Kyle, you're, you're on. You're on the small. <laughs> you're on the small screen there. No one can read that. No, it's fine. Um, yeah. So, so I don't know, I just, yeah, McCord. I have an A minus. Okay. All right, running backs here, Jared. With your without Trey Henderson again in this game, so you have to rely on chip and chop to take the load here. Uh, yeah. Over overall, if you if you combine the two here, I'm trying to do quick math here. Thirty three attempts for eighty four yards, which is about a two point five yard per carry in this game. Yeah, I mean, I thought Mayan looked good, and I thought that Trainum looked good running it. Um, he had a pretty uh, devastating miss on a pass block. Um, Tennessee thirteen nothing over Bama, by the way. Holy crap! Um, yeah, but the 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 it, it was it was just hard because, like I said earlier. Ohio State's offensive line just wasn't good enough to beat Penn State's defensive line when Penn State knew that they were going to run the ball. When Penn State knew the run was coming, Ohio State's offensive line just wasn't winning. On first down. On first on first and 10, most notably. Yeah. Gosh, I, I, so I wish I had I, the stats on how, how often did Ohio State run the ball on first down? It would not surprise me. If and what was the 80. average? And it would not surprise me on first down, they ran the ball 85% or more. It would I, not surprise I, me. I don't think it would be that high. I think it's just, mm. it's especially noteworthy because it failed most of the time and that was frustrating. So you'd just go, oh, of course they ran it on first and 10 and we got half of a yard. Anyway. Yeah. Um, so run, running backs. It's, hard, it's just I'm so hard get... to grade the running backs. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going to give a C for the running backs here. There, there were some holes that were missed, and then just follow your blockers. There's plenty of times when it, it's like just follow your blockers. There, there was one I remember. I think it was. I think it was mine. Uh, if he just stayed right on Stover's butt, there he would have had four or five yards, and instead he had a new yard. He had zero yard uh, carry. And just and try to bounce it outside there. I, under, I understand that it's 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 a tough run against this Penn State defense but they had some speed and are able to to track down these two running backs who don't have a lot of speed here it's it was a little frustrating at times and holes were missing and the run blocking was just abysmal it was abysmal in this in this game so that's why i i gave him a c just an overall especially the pass blocking just not good at all I, I gave him a B, but it's just it's hard to grade them when the 
offensive line just isn't there's just a lot. I don't even want to say the offensive line played poorly. And I guess we'll talk about that here in a second, because, again, this Penn State defense is I mean, their front seven is so incredibly good. They have an incredibly talented front seven. So it's it's really hard to say when the offensive line played poor because the offensive line paid, played poorly, played poorly. It just feels like I'm blaming them. And again, I'm not mm-hmm. saying the offensive line is fixed and spectacular, actually. But I am saying that the offensive line played better than I was expecting them to. Yeah. So speaking of that, the offensive line, I, I'll i give a C as well. I know just hear me out. I know a lot of people want to say give the offensive line a D, give them an F here. I'm going to go higher two than this, actually. Only, only, only let up two sacks in this game here. You know the the rushing yards don't does not look good, but the passing pass blocking was very, very good. A lot better than I thought they were going to do against this uh this Penn State defense. I was really impressed, especially in that first half, how well the offensive line played. Like I mentioned earlier in this episode, the wheels kind of started sputtering off in the second half, but. First half, I was very pleased what I saw. Yeah, um, I'm actually going to go higher. I'm not again. I'm not saying the offensive line played great, but here's the thing: compared to what we saw early in the season against like Youngstown State, against Indiana, against a lot of the teams who Ohio State's offensive line did not look good against. The level of competition here is so much higher. And I thought that they played honestly better against Penn State today than they did against inferior opponents in September. All right. It was their best game of the season. Opponent adjusted. Austin, I, I think I think that's probably true. I think that's I, I would I'd want to think about that. And I would say it's at least disputable, but it's also very possibly true. Yeah, I, w- I would I would like to compare that to Purdue last weekend because I thought the offensive line did very well. against Opponent Purdue. adjusted being the important. I, I know. <laughs> I know. All right. Moving on to the tight end here. <laughs> Talked a little bit about Stover uh, yeah. uh, a little bit earlier here. Four catches, 70 yards. Made some great catches. Made some great catches in this game, but but, <laughs> but some of the blocking on both pass and um, especially on run blocking, uh, not not his best game. No. Where so what you would going? you get? What would you oh, give? Okay. What would you give first. the farmer? Yeah. What would you give the farmer here, Jared? B minus. Um, the run blocking wasn't always bad, although there were some key misses, as you pointed out. Uh, and I thought he was incredibly, I mean, he's probably the second best pass catcher on the field today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was, I was going to say C plus, uh, I, I know he made some great catches here, but it's hard for me to give a good grade based on how bad and how, and how bad they were with some of those, um, blocking that they, that Stover did. And not, not just Stover, on on top of that, the the pass blocking by some of the other tight ends who came into the game w- was also not great. Excuse me, not the pass blocking, the run blocking. Yep. All right. Why do receivers here? Uh, we talked Good. about. We, you know, we talked I, about Marv already. Eleven catches, one hundred sixty-two yards, had the touchdown. Tate, the freshman, there three catches, twenty-one yards. Fleming had a catch, nine yards, and uh, X had a catch for six yards. Yeah, um, I'm gonna. I, I was I was back and forth on this because early on in the game, it looks like it looked like the wide receivers were gonna have the case of the dropsies again. Marv dropped one. Fleming dropped one. Like I feel like it was either the second or maybe it was the second and third drives of the game. Both of the both of the primary wide receivers on the team dropped the ball. Uh, so it, it really started to look like it was going to be another case of. Um, we have to count Curry as a tight end and he missed his block. Yeah, I agree, Austin. Um, so, yeah, it just. As far as the wide receivers, like they looked good on the first drive, 
Then they started to get get some dropsies going, but then I feel like they totally delivered later. Fleming had a um, Fleming had a really nice catch, but I think it was that one was called back uh, mm-hmm. because of a holding call. Um, the it was on Simmons. It was on Simmons. I was I, I re- the reason I sort of stopped talking there for a second was like penalties maybe i should drop the offensive line back down to a b um <laughs> maybe i should uh, i think it was just the one holding call that they got called for which is the only ones that count um marvin harrison jr obviously has a huge game yeah he had the one drop but he totally redeemed himself um carnell tate i feel like had two chances at like 50 50 balls uh didn't really come down with either of those for big plays but he does have three catches otherwise um it's just hard because i want to i want to grade marvin harrison jr really well but i don't know but like Outside of Marvin Harrison Jr., there were four catches by wide receivers. Five catches by wide receivers, depending upon if, if I think Xavier was playing wide receiver at the time. So we'll, we'll say we'll say five catches by wide receivers for a grand total of what? 15, 36 yards. Five catches for 36 yards by all wide receivers not named Marvin Harrison Jr. It's a problem. That is a problem. I mean, Emeka wasn't in this game here and, and definitely showed here, but Mar- Marv stepped up there and really, really took control here. So I, so I give I'd the wide receivers. A yeah, I give the wide receivers okay. a B yeah. as well. Um, man, but that grade's being carried a lot by Marv. Yeah, if it wasn't for Marv, yeah, that would plummet <laughs> that would plummet but thank goodness marv is there all right defense defensive line here i mean i i gotta give the defensive line an a it's such a stellar stellar performance by this uh defensive line huh. yes a, a plus uh, let, let's just give them an, a straight up a plus here defensive line played outstanding held Oh, Penn State's rushing attack. I mean, we talked about uh, Allen and Singleton. Um, probably two, like, Penn State has a really good uh, duo running back. And for them holding those two to, what is that, to 60, 74 yards total yeah. in this game? Outstanding. Outstanding. I mean, I would argue that Penn State screwed up by not giving Singleton the ball more. That's a classic James Franklin blunder, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. He had what nine he had nine touches, forty-eight yards, over five yards up a pop there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and when Penn State and, out, and outside of the fourth quarter, it's not like Penn State was ever like out of the game and couldn't run the ball. Yeah. It wasn't until somewhat late, it wasn't until Ohio State's second touchdown that you would have ever said Penn State needed to get away from running the ball, which yeah. would have uh, what accounted for what two drives for Penn State when they like needed to throw the ball. I would say, is that is that accurate? There were only two drives for Penn State where they absolutely needed to throw the ball. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Uh, maybe the one going into halftime. Oh, but, although, but they ran the ball a lot on that drive. So they, no, they, not that they, they yeah they ran that, which I I did not understand how the, they just killed that talk. It was so confusing. Is Saban Linebacker. washed? No, Saban's not washed. It's just you need to have a quarterback in college football, and he doesn't have one this year. All right, linebackers, Jared. I I got to give the linebackers like a I would say an A. Honestly, I would say I can't I can't really think of anything bad to say about them. They, they made some uh, great tackles. They didn't. It. The only thing I could think of is Chambers had the really bad positioning, but I can't blame him too much because I don't think he was playing zone and that far left side wasn't his. 
Yeah. Oh, on that on but, the on the tight end reception. No, I don't blame him for yeah. that at all. I don't think he was supposed to have that zone area. Um, no, I thought Chambers played well. I thought Cody Simon played well. Um, Eichenberg, I thought had a very Eichenberg game. Um, sort of silently playing well. Um, it, like you think, oh, I don't really remember a whole lot from Tommy Eichenberg this game. And then he leads the team in tackles. That's just kind of what Tommy Eichenberg does at this point. Just silently dominates the game. Yeah, and there was, there was, a, there was one drive. Cody Simon took control too. Yeah. Cody absolutely. Simon had himself a, a pretty decent game as well. Uh, corners. I, I got to give the corners an A plus. Corners played outstanding. You're without your, your CB one in this game here. And what do you do in this game? You 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 hold Penn State to under 200 passing yards here. Uh, their their main their main uh, wide receiver Lambert, six receptions, 52 yards, outstanding. Yeah, I I give them a A plus. Very very good game. Yeah, I I totally agree. The only reason I even kind of considered not giving them the plus. Was yeah, because he's no on the DBs. Yeah, no, no penalties on those corners or none. safeties. The only reason I even slightly considered and I also I'm also giving the cornerbacks an A plus. The only reason I considered not doing it is simply because I felt like the defensive line made the cornerbacks lives lives pretty easy here. Like there was such a consistent pass rush. And even when there wasn't a consistent pass rush, Aller was so flustered by the pass rush even if it didn't come on every single play that he was just out of sorts. Um, yeah, I'm going to go a plus for the corners. I'm also changing my mind on the linebackers. I think we're going straight a there because I thought the linebackers for the most part were good in pass coverage as well. Mm -hmm. um, a couple given up to the tight ends, but that's going to happen sometimes. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, safeties. I, Give him. I'll give. I'll give him an. I'm stuck between an A and A plus. <laughs> I, I, I'll stick with an A plus. Hey Kyle, how if many the quarters? How many? How many? If I gave plays, the quarters an A plus. I'll give the safeties an A plus. What What was Penn State's longest play on the day? Oh, let's look here. If I comparison, if I look at big plays, biggest play was a 34 yard uh, pass in the in the second quarter there to uh to Theo Johnson for 34 yards and the second biggest um Nick Singleton run for 20 yep yep so was, yeah and only the, one play and the third, go ahead and then the third was on that last drive for for uh Penn State as well where they had 19 yards a uh, 19 yard reception where they just were able to pass the ball just because of the prevent defense. So how state was running 29 to a tight end. Yeah. He had a lot of room to run in front of him. Um, there was a lot of yards after the catch for the tight end. Um, so yeah, the, you look at the safety, the safety are supposed to give up big or are supposed to prevent giving up big plays. Only one play over 30 yards, only one play over 20 yards. Sounds like the safeties did their job. Yep. I'm giving them an A+. Plus. All right, and it's special teams, Jared. Did, are you going A or A+. Plus? I said A+. Plus. If I gave the corners okay. A+, plus, give the safeties an A+, plus too. Sure. All right, special teams, Jared. S still none over 40. That's huge for us. I, based off of last year, it's beyond huge. Whatever the hugest form of huge is, it's that. Um, special teams, I'll say a B minus. B minus. You, you missed a field goal there, so I'll. No, okay. no, we're 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 going so much worse than B minus. But by, by the way, it says kicking on the board. Is this kicking, or is this it's special, special teams. teams? No, just special, just special teams. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to go D. I mean, the. Yeah, you're, kick, you're right. The, 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 the punt. The, there was that punt coverage. You're right. That punt the punt coverage. coverage yeah, um, I, I thought that I'll, there I'll were a, a couple of punting shanks. You have a missed yeah, field goal. I'll say a goal. C minus then. 
Uh, Singleton had a really nice return on one of the plays. Yeah. Sorry, Kyle, what did you change your grade to? To C minus. I, I I didn't think too much about the punt, the punt return the two punt returns that Penn State had that ended up getting quite a bit of yardage there. Yeah. Well, and then the fumble okay. is the biggest. Or you know, it's not a fumble; it's a muff. But yeah. And, and, and that was that was on Ballard. The Ballard need, yeah. needed to tell needed to tell. Um, well, we Styles. don't. It was Styles there. He's, he's like a hey, Styles senior. Balls there, move, move. Yeah, it was all well. Styles. Well, we don't know because yeah. Yeah, we don't know because we don't we weren't there. Maybe Ballard wasn't signaling correctly. Maybe Ballard did signal correctly, but Styles didn't hear him. You know what I mean? Like it's it, it, it's hard yeah. to know for sure by watching it on television. But yeah, it, regardless, it's on the special teams. Fair enough. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and move on to our Buckeye leaves then, Jared. Buckeye leaves. All right. For the offense here. I'm, I'm I'm going to steal. I'm going to start first because I'm going to steal it, and it, it's it's Marvin Harrison Jr. You son of a. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then I'll go Kyle McCord. Okay. Uh, it, it's I, I know it wasn't a perfect game, but for a young quarterback in a situation where he's playing one of the best defenses in college football, he nearly throws for 300 yards, zero interceptions on the day. That needs to be said. Uh, zero turnovers that counted that needs to be said he protect even if he wasn't spectacular even if he's not where even you know he's he's not to where cj stroud was in even compared to cj stroud you know if we go seven starts to seven starts he's still he's, he's not he's behind cj stroud in that respect mm-hmm. But All right, defense. But he's still he he does what he has to do, which is not lose. Defense here. I'm, CJ's I'm busy. Go of, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out of a uh, little bit here. We mentioned his name once here. I'm gonna go with the freshman. I'm gonna give um, my defensive Buckeye leave to Matthews. Okay. I'm gonna give mine to Matthews here. I I thought he did very well. Uh, didn't hear much from him, which is what you want from a corner. And him coming in here for the injured Burke. Yeah, I'll, I'll give I'll give mine to Matthews. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of names you can you can put in here, but I'm yeah, not, yeah. I'm going I'm going to give some I'm going to give a leaf to Matthews here. I Matthews was I I was hoping to I was hoping to use Matthews as my wild card, but I might have to switch it up now. <laughs> uh, defense, I'm going to go JT. I, I think he was disruptive the entire football game. I don't care what the stats end up saying. He was disruptive the entire football game. Well, who, who's the uh, who, who does the chat want? Who do you want for your defensive Buckeye Leaf chat? Simon's a good one, too. I see a Cody Simon. Is anyone going to dispute Zach on that? Uh, we have a, one for Matthews, but Kyle already gave one to Matthews. So I think we'll stick with Cody Simon. Yeah, I mm-hmm. thought Cody Simon had a great game. And your wild card. Who are you giving your wild card to, Jared? I'm going to go with Igbenosa. Uh, first game as the starting number one, not starting cornerback, but as like the cornerback, is the number one cornerback. And he did exactly what he was supposed to do, which was, you know. By the way, he has five solo tackles on the day. Yeah, all of, all all five of his tackles were solo. Yeah, uh, one of them tackle for a loss. I don't know if those were like screen plays or if those were some sweeps or exactly how those came about. I'd have to go back and look. But it's not because he was giving up a ton of passes. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, um, well, Kyle, how many how many passes did Drew Aller even complete before that 18. last drive? Before that oh, last before- drive. You know, what? Let me rough look. guess. Can you get a rough guess? How many not counting the last drive? How many completed passes did Drew Aller have? Uh, let's see. Three plus 
three plus three nine. He had nine. He had, se- he had seven seven complete passes. He had seven complete passes in that last drive there. Okay, so eleven. It's ten or eleven. Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll call it eleven before that last drive. Eleven. Again, 11 completed passes. Regardless, not a lot. Yes, th- thank you. He was 10 of 32 into the last drive or two. Okay. Yep, so, here, yeah, let's... Here it is, Jared. 10 of 33 before the last drive, someone else says. So, yeah, I mean, regardless, it's it's about... We'll just say 10 of 30-something. 10 of low 30s. So, yeah, you know, you look at all the... You look at all of the tackles that Igbenosa has. It's not because he was letting up passes regardless. Lou Holtz yep. wild card. Did, I, did anyone else one day to grab the mic and be like, where's Joe Paterno at? How, how can you yell at someone even older so, than Lou so you Holtz? Gave, you gave, Find someone you who's gave dead. Big, you, gave, you gave Igbenosa and, uh, your wild card and well, I guess, I guess we're going to make it three corners to give a uh, Buckeye Leaf. I'm going to give mine to Hancock. I'll give my wild card to Hancock. I thought he played a really good game as that uh, DB2 alongside with Matthews. Yeah, very, very happy with what I saw with uh, with the defensive backs. Would have been better if Franklin ran across the field and came out in new pants. Yes, that, that would have been great. Yeah. I think that is it. I think that is... Our Scarlet and Grade episode for the Penn State game. Any any last comments before we wrap things up here? Well, we still need a wild card from we still need a wild card Buckeye Leaf from the chat. Can coaches, can coaches get, get leaves? Get Absolutely. Yeah. Yep, they can. Best thing about seven and zero. Everyone knows it's a chance to go eight and zero. Of course, it looks like they want to go Jim Knowles. Is that is that how do we feel about that? Kenyatta Jackson did look good, um, as did Caden Curry, at least when playing defense. Um, yeah, it looks like it looks like we're going Jim Knowles. <laughs> looks like we're going Jim, Jim Knowles. Knowles. All right. Um, yeah, just want to encourage everyone to uh, stop by the Discord server. Um, we're going to be watching games tonight. Of course, you this will be. This won't be published until Monday, so that doesn't mean anything to the people listening to this, but uh, we will be watching games in the Discord server like we do every single Saturday, unless, of course, we decide to do it on a do it on a Thursday night, which we have done before. Now, you can't tell me I suck if you join the Discord server. You have to be a patron in order to tell me I suck. Yeah, and not in the YouTube comments. You're only allowed to tell me I suck if you join the Patreon. That's one of the benefits of being a patron uh, is that you get to tell me that I suck. Otherwise, I don't want to hear it. Jared, you suck. Thank you, Patreon. <laughs> Yidis also tells me I suck. Okay, yeah. see? And I, and I just take it because I need the money. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I, I think... Don't call me Dabo. <laughs> I think that's it here, Jared. I think. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I really don't. <laughs> As we were just recording this straight after the game, I don't. That's I think fair. we can just go ahead and I think we can just go ahead and end this episode. Okay. Uh, you know what, Kyle? I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna handle it. I'm gonna handle it. Uh, let me. Take a look at something real quick as I scroll through our recruiting channel. Yeah, this is this is free. This is uh, normally paywalled stuff here. Um, we have. Uh, I thought it was in here. It apparently isn't. They must have been talking about it in some other channel. Uh, there, there are two important visitors coming into. Uh, Ohio State this weekend for recruiting in the 2024 class. And uh, two committed Miami players or Brooker Pritchett, I don't think is technically committed to Miami yet. Just going to say this. 
we need Miami to fall apart because the Ohio State coaching staff has uh, several open recruiting relationships with um, with some Miami players. And should Miami totally fall apart, it would really benefit Ohio State's 2024 recruiting class. I'll just say that. Uh, there's at least a wide receiver who I think is. Uh, did you find it? Austin. Ah, oh, you you are the best, Austin. Um, we've active. Uh, I have Miami committed wide receiver Chance Robinson in the twenty twenty four mock. Marquise Lightfoot Lightfoot is realistic. Brooker Pritchett is realistic. Zaquan Patterson is semi realistic, um, and. Uh, it, Robinson and Pickett are the ones who are visiting or have visited for the Penn State game. So something to keep an eye on. What about Jamie French? Uh, that would be the 2025 recruiting class. Um, I, you know, we'll see. He's committed to Bama already, but that's a super early commitment. And, you know, I don't know. That's 2025. I'm just going to put a real big. We'll see later on on that right now. All right. Uh, that's it. That's the end of today's show. Um, tonight's ending music uh, will be by a. Uh, we'll call them a folk punk band, I suppose, um, out of the Columbus area. They are called Two Cal Garage. Uh, I'm dedicating this song specifically to Penn State. Uh, and if uh, if you stick around and listen to the song or if you're in YouTube, we don't play the song on the YouTube version. You can instead uh, go to the show notes and follow the link to the song to get why I am dedicating this song to Penn State. If you want to get the joke, you got to listen to the song. That's all I'm saying. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to. Drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Two Cow Garage. <laughs>